Chase Young, what do you think? I mean, uh, we walked out of here yesterday. I had said Jalen Johnson was the guy I would really love, but how can you not love this trade? Uh, first of all, they got him for completely nothing. He's a fantastic player, and it does feel like they're piling on to what should already be a strength, even though it wasn't really performing as a strength. But um, they have stated for a while now that this is how they're going to go about defense. They build their defense from the defensive line out, and they believe, and they are accurate at least so far since drafting Nick Bosa, that their defensive backs will play better if the defensive line is stopping the run and making the quarterback really, really uncomfortable no matter who's back there. That's their philosophy, and my gosh, this should help. I will say this, though, as I said a few minutes ago, Dibs, uh, Steve Wilkes, now you're really on the clock, man, because if, if, this yeah, group, yeah. if this group can't perform, what are we doing? What are we doing? This is the most devastating defensive line in football, and it's not close. Uh, Philadelphia still, to me, is more devastating. E. They they got rid of Javon Hargrave and got better, and uh, you know they're as deep and as ferocious. All you have to do is watch Hassan Reddick. And uh, yeah. you, know, you watch Carter in the middle. In the I, middle, I agree with you. On the ends, come on. Who's I would take Bosa? Hassan Reddick over Bosa right Bo- now. You would? Right now, absolutely. Come on. Don't, Hassan, don't. Watch Hassan Reddick play, and what? I know you do. Watch Nick play. He's not. Hassan Reddick is getting hands on QB and getting hands on football more often than, than Nick Bosa. I mean, prisoner of the moment, maybe. Like prisoner he's, of the season he's right the, now. He's the DPOY. Like, I, he's some, not going back to back. No, he's not. He's not going to even be in the top ten. I believe something. Wrong. I, I believe something's wrong schematically with the oh, way this is all being okay. deployed. Yeah. I really do. I know people say, "Hey, for a for a billion dollars, go get the quarterback," and that's not wrong. But you don't have this many great defensive players just all at the same time suddenly can't play. Right? Like I just have the hardest time buying that. And now you're going to put Young on the other end, like two t- top two picks. Sure. Who, by the way, when healthy, perform like top two picks. As Armstead's an, a first rounder on yeah, the inside. As an offensive line, what do you do? And if you're Steve Wilkes, like I said, I, I, I'm sorry. If this doesn't work, I, I have no choice but to think that it's you. I have no choice. There is so they, they are drunk with talent on this line, and they've got 12 days until their next game. Yep. So you've got basically a week and change to figure out how you can get these dogs to start eating because they haven't been eating. And yes, a lot of pressures. And that's great, but you look at back-to-back weeks where quarterbacks carved you up, and even the week prior, P.J. Walker made enough plays to beat you. And I know that's a little bit of an odd one because if the kicker makes a kick, you win the game, and this conversation doesn't go all the way back to Cleveland. But look at the last two weeks where your defense looked porous and looked very charitable in terms of allowing yards. Well, it's not just that. I actually think your Cleveland point is a good one because it wasn't P.J. Walker who carved them up, but he was able to function. Why? Because the Cleveland run game did. And that's what I think we're not discussing enough. We're so focused on Nick needs sacks. Nick got paid. Nick needs sacks. Okay, that's not wrong. But why is the 49er defense crippled right now? Because they're not stopping the run. That's it. It kills you in the NFL. It kills you. It makes mediocre quarterbacks better. It makes good quarterbacks great. If if they're handing it to their running back on first down and it is second and four, and then they have options with whatever they can do, and you are giving up five or six yards a carry, especially, by the way, to a group of running backs that has been incredibly underwhelming this year. Jerome Ford, couple decent games. Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt had just returned off the couch. Alexander Madison had done nothing this year. He was a fumble machine. And Joe Mixon, for two years now, has been a fantasy drafter's disappointment. And these guys ran roughshod over the 49ers. That's what's killing them. And Chase Young is also good against the run. As Evan just said, these guys, Javon Hargrave, that's what he's doing here. That's where it all starts. For me... Travis Etienne is the name we're going to talk about next. He's a problem, coach. he is a really good running back. And if he gets loose in 12 days, they will be 5-4 and because Trevor Lawrence is plenty good to look like the quarterback god if Travis Etienne is running for 75 and catching for 65. You do that, 
you are totally up a creek. It is these four guys' job. And I know there are others, Gregory and Farrell, the guys will sub in. But when you have that, think of the salaries that are now on that starting D-line, Bosa, Young, Armstead, Hargrave. My God, go eat. There are no excuses anymore. That's, no. That's the best And you group should be able to get it done with four. And it's not just about the pass and sacks and the pass rush and pressures. You're right. And all the rest of that. If you look at the running metrics right now, yards per attempt, they're giving up 4.1, which is 16th in the NFL. Dead middle. They're tied with Green Bay and the Rams in terms of yards per attempt allowed. You're giving up almost 90 yards a game. And the big problem with allowing so much rushing against you is it keeps you from playing complimentary football, which is where you keep your defense fresh and you keep your offense on the field. These last few games have flipped in terms of time of possession. Kyle Shanahan wants to have it 34 or 35 minutes a game. He wants to be the one to establish the run game, control the tempo of the game with the run and with the rush attack, keep his defense fresh. But the last three weeks, it's been the opposite because the defense can't get off the field. It's third and short, and the other team converts. The defense is on the field. The defense gets tired. The offense comes on, and they're not able to run the ball on their own. And so now you put a more fatigued defense back on the field where the cycle continues. I'll tell you what. Um, I know it's 12 days away. We got all the time in the world to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's not about them, although I do think they're very good. They're, they're going to also be coming off a bye, and they've won five in a row. So that's a very good football team the Niners are going to have to face. But you think about what they might look like or what I hope they do look like in 12 days. This is you go into the bye they're going to have conversations about where Steve Wilkes is going to stand, but more importantly, what he's going to call. And when that 49er team comes back out onto the field, this time you're going to have what I hope is an adjusted scheme and approach on the defensive side of the football. Chase Young, opposite of Nick Bosa on the defensive line. Trent Williams, back in the lineup. Debo Samuel, back in the lineup. And I have, I think, a rational belief that the 49ers will look like a different football team when we see them again. They need to because the way they've looked the last three weeks is not looked like themselves. The defense has not been the lockdown unit we're used to seeing, and the offense has looked a little bit muted, and it's partly because of Trent Williams. And I didn't think that they would miss Debo as much as they do, but they clearly miss Debo Samuel. Kyle Shanahan and Bobby T., the running back coach, they have not had faith to use anyone else at running back other than a couple of carries for Eli Mitchell. It's been all Christian McCaffrey, and without Debo Samuel, that's what they've gone with. If Debo comes back, you're going to get Debo back involved in the ground game, give him three or four carries, and you can get some jet sweeps going, and you can start to diversify things a little bit. But the whole team, during these 12 days, you got to look at everything you've done. What went right? What's going wrong? And how do you fix it? Um, 888-957-957 in the number. Your reaction to what the 49ers did at the trade deadline. A uh, a comp third goes for, for Chase Young. They do not address the defensive backfield. We can get into it. Peter King is going to join us later on in the show. We'll have him at, uh, at 5 o'clock. Uh, good doc. Brian Feely is going to be on, so we'll talk injuries a little bit later. We got some Warriors stuff to do as well. But, uh, but let's go straight to you. 888-957-9570. Let's go to Mario in Vallejo. Hey, Mario, thanks for calling. What's cooking? Hey, what's going on, fellas? What's happening, man? Hey, man, uh, you know, another day in the sunshine, baby. You know how we do. We're on a roll. Hey, just want to let you guys know, uh, you know, the D-line for the Niners, the last three games, they've been struggling with uh, a new, with, with the D.C. calling more blitzes. And I think that the scheme kind of changed on them. And uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not still that D-line that we've seen that puts pressure on quarterbacks. I think they're just trying to adjust a little bit. And uh, the move to get to get Chase, you know, or uh, to get, um, you know, a third-round pick for that guy, I'm not sure how that really works out, man. He's injured a lot, and I don't think they really needed that. They needed more help in the secondary. We had Ezra Gonzalez from Minnesota that we could have went and got, and um, that would have boosted our guard on the old line, and uh, that would help Purdy. That would help McCaffrey. That would help the whole offense. 
The defense don't give up a lot of points despite their struggles lately. But, um, man, there was a Dory Jackson out there. There was a lot of moves that I think could have been played. And I think the Niners missed on this one. I well, really, really do. Mario, li- li- let me respectfully disagree just because uh, the defensive line is giving up a lot of points. They gave up 31 to the Bengals. That's absurd. This this defense should never give up a 30-burger to anybody. And that defensive line, I, I hear what you're saying about the secondary, but, my man, they're not stopping the run. I'm not, I'm not blaming anybody named uh, D'Amador Lenore or Isaiah Oliver over the fact that, that teams are running at five a carry right now on the 49ers. I do think this D-line needed help. Yeah, I don't. I think that they started doing a different scheme, and they had to adjust to it, you um, know, and they will. And once they do, they'll still be the same guys, Bosa and Green, and, and all them guys, Armstead, Hargrave, the same guys you were talking about the first five games of the season that were just shutting everything down. Yeah, but I don't know. There's no, thanks, Mario. There's no time to adjust. We're in the middle of the season. And, and by the way, why would they need to adjust to a new scheme? They're one of the best defenses in football. This, to me, is a classic, it wasn't broke, why did you come in and try to fix it situation? Well, it's not just the scheme. The players in the scheme have got to play better. You can't tell me that they've changed the scheme so much that the guys who are playing this aren't able to play at least close to the level that they normally played at. Uh, but they haven't. They haven't. And right. so That's you on know. the individuals. And the players have said themselves... The players are the ones who will go out there and have to make plays. Of course they're going to say that. They're not going to throw their uh, coats under the bus. That's Kyle Shanahan's exactly. job. Exactly. 